Adobe just came out with a massive update for Photoshop and it includes things like generative fill and a whole bunch of other AI tools and I'm so excited to show you guys. But quickly, if you guys are actually curious on how to get this latest update of Photoshop, you'll actually need to have Photoshop beta installed. Where you can install this is by going to your creative cloud, clicking on apps at the top and then scrolling down until you see the beta apps. On the beta apps, you'll see all the different apps that you can install and then obviously just hit install install on Photoshop. Now, before you actually open up your Photoshop application, I ran into a bug. So just in case that you run into this bug as well, you want to make sure that everything is updated So go to updates and then click check for updates. And you'll see a bunch of programs that still have yet to be updated. So make sure you update and then your Photoshop beta should be all good to go. So I just loaded in a image I generated in now AI into Photoshop beta. I'm going to show you guys these new AI generative tools. They're so cool to use. So the way it works is you can go to the marquee tool in the top left corner here, the one I selected, and you can just drag across to make a rectangle. And once you finish your rectangle, this generative box is going to come up right here. There is going to be other options that you can choose, but what we're going to be doing in today's video is the generative fill, as that's by far the coolest option. So in this generative fill, I'm simply going to describe what I want in the sky here. So I'm just going to say a blimp with red and yellow stripes and a cartoon slash digital style. So we're going to generate and it's really that easy to generate yourself images. And there you go. As you can see, we have a blimp in the sky with those red and yellow stripes. I'm going to do the same thing, but in the water, I'm going to say a shark. I'm going to keep it very simple. And there we go. We have a shark. And if you don't like the first option, you can actually view the different variations. And if you don't like either of those three, as you can see in this photo, I don't really like it. The shark's not actually actually in the water, which is what we want. So we'll say shark in the water and let's see if it regenerates this any better. It doesn't appear to have actually placed the shark in the water, which is all right because we can go to our layers over here on the right side of the screen and you can actually just delete the layer. And with the layer deleted, it's no longer on the screen. Now, if you ever want to go back and regenerate a layer, so let's say I didn't really like this blimp. Well, you just click on the layer or go over here to click click on the layer and in the prompt, you can regenerate what that looks like. All right, so that's the basics. Now let's get a little more crazy with it. Going over to the object selection tool, I'm just going to select my guy right here and then we can go and generate a different human. So I'm just going to say a stormtrooper from Star Wars and let's see if our guy turns into a stormtrooper. And I wouldn't say that's a stormtrooper. However, it definitely changed the person completely altering their clothes and you can do this with even bigger subjects like let's say the sky i wanted to change the sky so that it is a very cloudy day so we can generate a whole bunch of clouds within the sky now, i will say with your prompts you should be a lot more descriptive than i'm being with my prompts so as you can see these clouds they look like a very realistic cloud whereas the rest of my imagery is kind of in that digital slash cartoony style Style. And obviously those types of styles are going to clash with each other. Now here I just imported a new photo and another awesome option is the remove background option, which completely gets rid of the background in your photo. Now it's definitely not perfect. As you guys can see, it like chopped off his finger here. But if you find that it misses anything, you can go to the add to mask button and simply just paint it back in. You can also change the feather so the image doesn't have as harsh of lines as you can see right now the farther we go to the right the more feathered it becomes and the less harsh of lines now what's one of the coolest options if not the coolest option with this update is let's say you have a photo like so and you really want to expand the sides of it let's say you want to make the photo more horizontal because you're using it on a horizontal platform and you just want it spread out well this is going to be the feature you're going to look for so we're going to use our magic wand to select all of the outer area and then we're going to hit generate fill and just hit generate and we're not gonna put anything into the prompt and as you guys can see it is now filled in the rest of the image there is this line right here so i would recommend selecting the whole photo and maybe not doing the way i did it you can also add the different variations i like the first one the best and when adding to the outside of your image you can also make custom prompts when doing so, so let's say you wanted to expand this mountain but you wanted to put a house on the mountain well you could add that to your prompt so that really goes over all of the 
the brand new AI features within Photoshop. There are brand new features with this update. For example, the gradient update allows you to actually see the preview of the gradient before placing it, which is such a blessing. As someone who's used Photoshop for quite some time now, this feature needed to be in the application. There's a few more minor details that have been updated on the app. Overall, I showcased all of the main features that you definitely want to go and try out for yourselves on Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and have yourselves a fantastic day.